Hi everyone, John here today. Today we're looking at introducing fractions. So we have five questions. Um, the timing of the questions are in red, so feel free to skip to the question you're interested in. Okay, question one, rewrite with a denominator of 24. Let's first look at this word denominator. Now, these are, this is a fancy maths word. When you see a fraction, you'll have a numerator and you'll have a denominator. So, the numerator is on the top and the denominator is on the bottom, so just remember that. Now, I'll probably be calling it top and bottom or, or numerator denominator. So let's look at it. So we need to rewrite these fractions with a denominator of 24. Now, the trick to these questions is whatever you do with the top and bottom, you need, you need it just so whatever you do with the top, you need to also do with the bottom and vice versa. So whatever you do with the bottom, you need to do with the top. So they're asking for a denominator of 24. So instead of 1 over 3, I need something over 24. Now, what do I need to do to 3 to get 24? I need to times 3 by 8. So I have times the bottom, the denominator, by 8, so I've also got to times the top by 8. So 1 times 8 is just 8. So there we go. I've written the first one with the denominator, or the bottom, as 24. So let's look at the second one now. I want to write it with the denominator of 24. So I'm going to write that in first. Now when I look at my top fraction, what do I need to do? to turn 8 into 24. Well, 8 times 3 is 24. Now remember, the trick is, whatever you do to the bottom, you also do to the top. So I'm going to times the top by 3. So that's going to be 6 over 24. Okay, well, let's look at the third one now. So I'm going to write it again. Okay, what do I have to times 4 by to get 24? Well, 4 times 6 is 24. So I need to times the top by 6 as well. 3 by 6 is 18. 18 on 24. Okay, last one. We have the denominator, 24 again. I need to times this. It's similar to the second one. I need to times that by 3. So I'm also going to times the top by 3. 7 by 3 is 21. So now I've got these four fractions written with the denominator, or the bottom, as 24. Okay, question two is a bit more um, fraction practice. So we've got the fraction on the left, and that equals the fraction on the right. Now, similar to question one, the trick to these is whatever you do on the top line, the numerator, you also have to do on the bottom line. So let's use these um, uh, example questions to show. So you've gone from 7 over 9, this fraction, equals 14 over the box. So the goal for these questions is to work out what's in the box. Okay, so 7 over 9 equals 14 over the box. Well, 7 turned to 14 by timesing by 2. So in order to go from here to here, we've times by 2. So whatever we do on the top, we also do on the bottom. So we also times this by 2. So that'll equal 14 over 9 times 2 is 18. So here's our answer. The box equals 18. So let's have a go now at the second one. So you've got 8 over 5 equals 80 over the box. We've got to find this. So how did 8 turn into 80? Well, 8 times 10 is 80. So whatever we do on the top, we also do on the bottom. Times this by 10 will equal 80 over 50. So our answer equals 50. Okay, question three looks at rewriting these fractions. We've been working with fractions in what they call the simplest form. Now, you're going to the same trick as question one and two, that you're going to have to be timesing or dividing top and bottom, the numerator and denominator, by the same number. Now, what do we mean by simplest form? So we have these fractions here. So we've got the first one, three over nine. So let's say you've got a test out of nine and you get three marks right. So you get three out of nine. 
So there's your mark for the test. Now to write it in simplest form, you need to basically get these numbers to, the, to as small as possible. Now I'll show you how to with a few examples. In order to do this, you need to go back to uh, chapter one and look at highest common factors. And basically what highest common factor is, the highest number that goes into both of these top and bottom. So let's do a couple of examples just so we can get the hang of these. So we'll start with an easy one, three over nine. Let's look at what uh, I always like to write in my second line as, what is the highest common factor? Well, a bit of practice, the highest common factor in a three and nine will be three. Because three goes into three and three goes into nine. Now you divide the top and the bottom by three. You've got to do it to both. So three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. So this is now in its simplest form. Let's go to the second one. 15 over 18, highest common factor equals, uh, this one here is three again. And this will come with a bit of practice. So now we divide top and bottom by three. So 15 divided by three is five. 18 divided by three is six. Now this is in its simplest form, great. Let's go to the third one now. 12 divided by 20, highest common factor. Okay, have a guess. I think well, four goes into 12 and 20. Uh, what about six? No, well, six doesn't go into 20, so I think we're good with four. So highest common factor of four, so now I divide numerator and denominator, top and bottom by four. 12 divided by four is three. 20 divided by four is five. There okay, go, simplest form. Let's look at the next one now. 15 divided by nine, highest common factor. Uh, well, three goes into 15 and nine. Great. 15 divided by three is five. Nine divided by three is three. Simplest form. Now this one's a little bit trickier. It's bigger number, so let's have a look. Now this is a little bit hard to find the highest common factor, so let's work it through. Well, we definitely know that two goes into both, because it's an even number, but I don't think that that's gonna be the highest common factor. What about, let's try four. Well, four times 12 is 48, so that's good. And four times uh, 16 equals 64. So, highest common factor equals four. Now just note, I'm not certain that the highest common factor is four yet. There could be a higher number. But you'll soon see that when I'm writing simplest form in fractions, it doesn't really matter. And you'll soon see. Let's use this one now. 64 divided by 4 is 16. And 48 divided by 4 is 12. Now let's have a look at this fraction here. Isn't it in simplest form? Well, it's not because we still can divide these number to make it even smaller. So now we have another line equals four, because four goes into 16 and 12. So our end result will be 16 divided by four is four, and 12 divided by four is three. So this, is, this looks a little bit better now. This is in its simplest form. Okay, question four. Now this is the first time that we see that we're adding fractions. Uh, we're looking at adding fractions in this question. The next question is subtracting fractions. And they both rely on the one big golden rule. Okay, and the golden rule, which I'll put up a little star here, is the bottom line, or the denominator, denominator have to be equal, or the same. Okay? Now, the key is, if your denominator is the same in the fractions, or the two that you're adding, all you then do is add the top, and you don't add the bottom, okay? So I'll reiterate that. If your bottom line is the same, so here, for example, five and five, we're the same. This one's not, this is 10 and five, but we'll deal with this later. If the bottom line is the same, you just get to add the top two numbers, okay? Let's do a bit of practice. So the first one, one over five plus two over five. The denominators are the same, so that's great. So it's simple, you just add the top. One plus two is three, will equal three over five. Now notice here I didn't add the denominator. There's the big key. Second one, three over 10 plus four over five. Now our denominators have to be equal. So we now use techniques that we did in questions one through three 
and also um, previous in chapter uh, in integers about finding lowest common multiples, we need to make the denominators equal. Now we need to find the lowest common multiple of ten and five. Okay. Well, 5 goes into 10, and 10 goes into 10, so we're going to write these two fractions out with a denominator of 10. Now, for this second one, I've turned the bottom line into 10, so what do I have to do? I times it by 2. I also have to times the top by 2, so this will now be 3 over 10 plus 8 over 10. Now, notice this is the exact same thing as the line above it, but I've just changed this from 4 over 5 to 8 over 10. And I'm allowed to do that because I've times top and bottom by the same number, and that's fine. So now I've, I've, um, I've, I've made the golden rule fine. I've got the denominators the same, so now I can just add the top. 8 plus 3 is 11. Equals 11 over 10. Great. Now the next one's a little bit harder. We need to find the lowest common multiple of 4 and 5 so that denominators can be the same. I can't use 5 because 4 doesn't go into 5. So, what's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 5? Well, you've done a bit of practice previously, that's 20. So I'm going to write out these two with the denominator of 20. So what did I do to 4 to turn into 20? Well, I times it, I'll write it in small here, times that by 5, so I also have to times the top by 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. Now, what did I have to times the bottom by to get to 20? I'll have to times it by 4, because 5 times 4 is 20. Now, if I times the bottom by 4, I have to times it, oh, pen slipped down there, the top by 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So there, there we are, we've satisfied the golden rule. Both denominators are equal. Now we can just add the top. Well, 15 plus 8 is 23. There we go. There's our answer. Question 5. Now we're subtracting fractions. Question 4 was adding fractions. Now it's the same golden rule, okay? So if you didn't see question 4, you might want to go back and have a look at that because that's pretty crucial for question 5. Now the golden rule, you remember from question 4, is the denominator when you're adding or subtracting fractions has to be the same, okay? So I won't go over that again. Have a look at question 4. We'll just go straight into these questions. If the denominator is the same, now we have a subtract sign, we subtract the top, we don't add, like in question four, okay? So, question one, uh, the, the, the first example, our denominators are the same, so that's great, so we can just subtract the top. Well, seven minus two is five, and we leave the denominator the same, because it's equal, and there's our answer. Let's have a look at the second one now. We've got 11 over 18 minus one over six, now, our denominators aren't equal, so we need to find the lowest common multiple of 18 and 6. Well, 6 goes into 18, 6 times 3 is 18, and 18 goes into 18. So we can write this as 11 over 18 minus, we have to times this by 3, and we have to times that by 3. So we've got 3 over 18. That's not very clear there. There we go. So bingo, now our denominators are equal. So we can now just go ahead and subtract the top. Well, 11 minus three is eight over 18. Great, okay, let's have a look at the third example now. We've got five over seven minus two over three. So we need to find the lowest common multiple of seven and three, okay. So, the lowest common multiple, well, does 3 go into 14? No, it doesn't, so 14 is not. Does 3 go into 21? Well, yes, it does. Great. So, the lowest common multiple will be 21. So, I'm going to write these two fractions with a denominator of 21. What did I have to times 7 by to get 21? Times it by 3. I have to times the top by 3 as well. So 5 times 3 is 15. Now let's have a look at what, does, what do I have to times 3 by to get 21? I have to times it by 7. Now what do I do to the bottom line? I do to the top. 
So 2 times 7 is 14. There we go. So now we've satisfied that golden rule of making the bottom line, the denominator, the same. So I can go ahead and now sub just subtract the top line. So 15 minus 14 is 1 over 21. Keep the bottom line the same. And there's our answer. Now just before we go on to question 6, I've just realised here in the second example, we are right, but we haven't simplified to its uh, most simple form like in question 3. We've got 8 over 18. So we need to find, we need to uh, reduce this down to its simplest form by, find, by finding its highest common factor. So uh, 2 goes into 8 and 2 goes into 18. So we've got a highest common factor equals to 2. So now I divide top and bottom by the highest common factor. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So here's our correct answer to this one.